Oh, hello. Hi, Alice. Hi, Annette. Looks like our other folks are taking their time today. <coughs> How are you guys doing? You doing well? Staying, keeping your feet dry? Can you guys hear me okay? While we're getting started here today, I want to show you once again what we created on Thursday night. Now that everything's dry, I'm so pleased with these cards. I just got to say, doing fine. Rain shower just started. Hi, Mary R. <clears throat> okay, and you're hearing me well. Uh, and there's Sharma. Hi to Brenda. Hi, guys. Loud and clear. Okay. All right. While we're waiting here for some of our other folks to join us, I want to show you again what we did on Thursday night because these are just beautiful. And I made up the little book tags we talked about. Maybe you can come in a little closer, honey. There we go. Um, just get rid of me if you wouldn't. Well, not get rid of me. You're not allowed to get rid of me. Sure. I think after 27 years, you're stuck with me. Okay. So if you didn't get your kit yet, be sure you get these because these are just too pretty for words. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. These were the ones from Thursday night. This is called Winter Wonderland, and it certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, just so, so beautiful. Yeah, good news and bad news. I got a little bit of Nouveau in. The bad news is they shorted most of my quantities, so I'm going to have to reorder from a different vendor. I have a little bit. Um, I don't think it's in the store yet, though, so... It'll kind of be a first come, first serve. I'll get it up later tonight. But um, and here's my two little bookmarks. I still need to glitter them. But I told you I was going to make bookmarks out of these last two because they're just too cute. There's my little bunny. And this just little. They're just too cute. It was too cute to throw away. So six cards, two bookmarks, and not a scrap bigger than... I did have this left. <laughs> Although I haven't got much of my crafty stuff made. I made Santa cards. I'm almost in tears. I'm so happy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're so happy. Brown drops from Nouveau. I need some brown drops and I can't find them. Let me see what I can do, Alice. Um, text me to look for brown drops, would you please, honey? <laughs> yeah, so those were fun from the other night. Let's look at what we're going to do today. We have robins and swans. This one is called Let It Snow. There's a robin. Hi, Mary Glasson. Welcome. <clears throat> These is greetings. Boy, I love these cards. <laughs> but then I guess you've heard that 500 times now. It's because I really love these cards. <laughs> Bryce is over there saying 501. I got some exciting news for you today and a favor to ask. Let me show you this. So here's my favor. Well, here's my news. Let me share my news with you. We just 
I just listed 1,200 listings to Etsy. And we our Etsy store is live. Our prices in our Etsy store are pretty comparable to what they are on Simply Special. Um, the item prices on most items are $1 more than they are on the website, on our regular website. Our shipping cost there is $4 for the first item, $2 for each additional item, but orders over $35 ship for free. So there's times if you need a small quantity order, that Etsy may actually be less expensive for you. And um, I thought you might appreciate that. I also kind of wanted to make my mark fairly early in Etsy. So some of my listings are either listed at our regular cost, um, like our three piece topper sets are at th um, $3.99 and $4.39 and $4.49 like they are in our regular store, the Deco large topper sets are actually marked at 349, which is less than they are in our regular store. And I, again, I just kind of wanted to make a mark out there and say, hey guys, we're here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> tell the world we're out here on Etsy. So, the favor I'd like to ask is I would love it if you guys would place some orders on Etsy and help me get established there. Um, again, it's only $35 threshold for free shipping out there. And the prices are very comparable. The name of the shop, and I'm so glad you asked that, Mary R., um, there's a there's a typo in the name, and I'm working with them trying to fix it. <laughs> Instead of simply special crafts with an S, it went in as simply special craft. Period. You know, just it's simply special craft. It's missing the S off the end. So if you put in simply special crafts as all one word, it's not going to bring me up because it's got an extra character. I'm working with Etsy to get that resolved and they've assured me they're going to get that done. But I'd love it if you guys would place some orders out there. And again, at $3.99, you're paying the same amount you are for three-piece topper sets in our store, but you only have to buy $35 to get free shipping. And it would be very, very helpful to me if I could get some positive ratings established out there because um, we originally set up the store in 2008 and then, you know, me, I, 18, yeah, 2018, and I never got around to doing much with it. And so it looks like I've been in business since 2018 and have zero sales showing. That's kind of sad. And I think that makes people think that, hi, Mary T. I think that maybe might make people think that they need to worry about us. <laughs> but if you will go out and place an Etsy order in the next two weeks, I'm gonna put everybody in a hat for a drawing for a prize to, um, Anybody who will place an Etsy order in the next two weeks and leave feedback, all those feedbacks will go into a hat and we'll draw out a winner of a prize to just reward you for helping me out with this. So how's that sound? And again, for smaller quantity orders, you may actually find that it could be less expensive to shop in Etsy than it is to shop in our web store. Now your web store generally will, yes, place the order and leave feedback, please. Um, but generally our store is gonna be your least expensive option. But for purposes of getting this Etsy store going, I went ahead and listed much of what I listed at cost and then 
or at our regular web store price. And then even those that have a little bit of a markup to pay the Etsy fees are, Etsy has a small fee, so that part's good. But even those that have a small fee, it's just adding a dollar to the price. And so if you're placing a smaller order, you might find it's less expensive there. So I've talked enough about that, but I just wanted to share that and ask your assistance because it would be great if I could get some orders out there, get them started and kind of prime the pump so that people would know they can trust us. Because, you know, people don't always trust a brand new, something that looks brand new, especially if it says brand new or no sales in 2018 on it. So, <laughs> I wish they wouldn't put that in there. I'd love it if I could say a brand new store, but it, right behind my name, it says, <laughs> Right behind my name, it says established 2018. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you do just need something small at that, and it's nice not to have to hit $69. You know, I can. I can push kits to the, to the Etsy site, and that actually might be a really cost-effective way for you guys to get some of your class kits. I think that's a great idea, Mary T. Let me do it. I'll do that for you. I actually have a couple kits out there, but let me push some more of our class kits out there because that would be great. Will I be putting up some of what? I'm I'll tell you what I have out there now. What I have out there now is all the Deco Large three piece kits. I hi Roberta. I have all of our three-piece hunky-dory kits out there. I haven't put the big ones yet. I have all the Craft Perfect papers, including the Craft Perfect mirror board that you guys love. I have those out there. I have, what else do I have out there? I pushed um, ha uh, Dazzle stickers, Starform stickers, Duty stickers, um, a few of the UU stickers. I put Find It Trading out there because nobody was really doing much with Find It Trading. So I put Find It Trading dies out there. Um, I have not put some of my handmade cards there, but I might try it, <coughs> <coughs> especially since I have photos of some of them. I might put a few of my handmade cards out there and maybe even put some card bundles, but that's not my primary objective. My primary objective was to create another channel for our store. Amazon is becoming more and more and more expensive and more and more and more restrictive in terms of um, sellers. And I'm pulling down a bunch of stuff. I have pulled down a bunch of stuff on Amazon in recent months. They've got some crazy new policies that just drive me nuts. If your item is valued at, is sold for less than $10 on Amazon and someone says they don't like it for any reason, all they have to do is say they don't like it. They don't have to say that it's bad or defective or anything else. They just have to say they don't like it. Amazon will refund them automatically for any item $10 or under. Um, the return policy on Amazon or on Etsy, you don't have to accept returns at all. I will, because that's who I am. I'll, hopefully I don't have an excessive number of returns, but a lot of sellers on Etsy aren't allowing a return policy at all. And the fees on Etsy, I'll tell you, my Amazon fees are close to 20%. My fees on Etsy are 5%. So I don't have to mark stuff up quite as, as high. You know, for small, tiny orders, that's why I have the $4 and then the $2 per item and up to 35 but if it is um if they're little tiny orders i still have to be able to pay my shipping and that's why i have the shipping fees up to 35 dollars. but if we hit that 35 dollar mark especially where i've marked some items up just a tiny bit um i should be able to pay my shipping okay and still come out in the clear so yeah, Etsy's a much better option. They're getting more and more and more traffic all the time. They're doing more and more and more 
um, to assist their sellers. And it's kind of going in exactly the opposite direction that Amazon's going. So I've pulled down, I used to have 10,000 listings on Amazon and we have maybe 4,000 now. Um, and I pulled down, I don't sell anything. Well, very little, almost nothing under $10, just because I so object to Amazon's policy that all somebody has to do is say, I don't like it. And you, you, um, you know, they just refund the sale. <laughs> I'm out shipping and my product and they refund the sale. So it's like, ah, <laughs> that's really, really painful. <laughs> So hopefully Etsy will be a good option, additional option for us. And as I was saying to you earlier, I think Etsy potentially has some value to you as our customers too, when you want something less than a full, you know, $69 order. So there we go. That's my, that's my big news of the day. I've been working on that this week as well as working on the garage and uh, working on carts and <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't doing anything between 2 and 3 a.m., so I thought, let's create an Epsi store. <laughs> oh. Speaking of cards, let's make some. Yeah, Bryce, speaking of cards, let's make some. So, again, um, I'm going to show these one more time quick through because we have so many people who have just tuned in. These are what we're making today. This kit is called Let It Snow. These are the ones we'll be making today. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I have another announcement too. <laughs> I just shocked Bryce. He just jumped in his chair. <laughs> I have another announcement too. I have a mark your calendars announcement for you. What's the, um, our party, our party that we've been promising for a while is going to be on Sunday, September 26th. Mark your calendars. Mark your calendars for that one, guys. We may not have class on the 25th because I'll be getting ready for the party on the 26th, but mark your calendars. We are having a party. It will be on Sunday, the 26th, more details to come, but that is forthcoming. Yep. Once again, Brittany strikes again. She said, Aunt Debbie, we've been promising this party forever. We got to get this thing on the calendar. I want it on the calendar now, Sunday, September 26th, time to be determined. We'll probably go three or four hours again. It is will be great fun. If you didn't participate in our last party, you got to go back and look at the video because it's crazy. We do crazy fun things. And yes, there will be shots involved, not alcohol. There'll be candy shots again, different kind of candy. And I'll let that, I'll let you veg on that one. Um, we will have games. We will have purple light specials. We will have the most marvelous time. I promise you it'll be a good time, just like last time. And, and last time was just a hoot. <laughs> really, really fun. So get that on your calendars. Don't schedule anything that day because Sunday the 26th is party day. Okay, here's our kit for today. Here's our Robins. Oh, so beautiful. Hi, Catherine. Welcome, friend. You're welcome to come to our party too. I won't ship your prize winnings to you in France, but you are welcome to come and participate and hang out with us on party day. We are going to be having our party on Sunday, the 26th. Mark your calendars, guys. It's going to be great fun. Great fun. Look at this beautiful cardstock. Look at that forest scene. You know, the little robin in the corner, and then you have all those beautiful trees. Oh, my gosh. So beautiful. Yes, party. It's going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. We have two DL cards and envelopes. 
we have one, two, two, European A6. We have an extra piece of cardstock, which is for doing a buildup. I remembered it this time. We have a six by six with an envelope and we have a center step with an envelope. So we're going to get all kinds of sizes today. You have two beautiful pieces, absolutely gorgeous pieces of adorable scorable. You have a piece of Rainbow Mary, compliments of Brittany. You have a little Let It Snow and some a uh, little packet of snowflakes that I wasn't going to include, but there's Brittany for you. She is always on the lookout for you, my friends. So let's get going. All right. The first thing I want to do today, because I have a lot of cards and some specialty shapes, is I'm going to lay my cards out on my cardstock so I can see where I got everything. <laughs> where I got all the pieces. Now this one is, is out of the adorable scorable. And I just used trim strips from some of my leftover trees. I know where that came from, but it's not gonna be on my layout. It looks like this one came from right here. That's where that came from. This one came from up here, oops, let me get these where you can see them too. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you back up a little bit while I'm doing this one? I want them to be able to see where they're coming from too. Let's see, it's kind of like a Chinese puzzle. Sometimes that came from right there. Interesting place, isn't it? No, it's not where it came from. It came from, where is that stick? there. It came from up there. Oh, there. Yeah, there it is. There's the mountains. It came from up there. This one came from over here. This one came from here. This one came from here. Okay. And yeah, that's six. Okay, because this one didn't have a piece of card stuck. All right. I just had to visualize that again since it's been a little while since I've done this. And I want to make sure I cut the paper right to get them where they go. Okay. All right. Can't see. Can you see now, Betty Gosel? Let me turn these around and then Bryce can maybe come back in closer. I'll show you where we're taking these from because sometimes it's really useful to see that. This is where they're coming from. There's the swan page. Can you get in on that now you can see? Okay, so we've got these two, the little robin card and the little swan card coming from the top of this one. We've got our DL card coming from the bottom. Okay, that's what this one looks like. This one's coming in up here. Okay. And this one is coming from right here. This should help. My thought here, Betty, is that I won't, I all, not only am I refreshing my memory, maybe I won't mess you up in cutting this time. <laughs> Because I know you're working on a phone and that can be really difficult. So I want to help every way I can. Okay. And then on the Robin cards, I've got the little bit, a little bit of the moon right here. And those card stocks, see that right up here in the corner? I've got a tiny bit of the moon. And this one's coming from here. And these trees over here are going to become my background are my trees for the inserts on my swan card 
<laughs> I do need another hand. Is that good? Everybody good where we're going? Where we are and where we're going? Sometimes in order to get six cards out of a set, we have to be a little creative. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get going. I'm going to start. I don't know why. I'm going to start with this Robin card right here. Probably because it's right in front of my nose. So I'm going to start there. Just leave those stacked up. I don't need a topper right now, so we'll put that over there. I am going to need this piece of adorable scoreboard. And I'm going to need this um, uh, DL card. Okay, so I'll put the rest of my supplies away for right now. And we don't need much for this card. It's very simple, but absolutely gorgeous. So let's go ahead and fold this to get started. <laughs> Clear like mud. <laughs> I love you, Roberta Clark. <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> you guys are fun. I love hanging out with you. I do. <laughs> Debbie has a poodle with antlers Christmas stamp on Etsy for $2.49. She's tempting me again. <laughs> it looks a bit like Ted, too, doesn't it? I noticed that. <laughs> when I put it up there, especially in the profile pic, it looks a bit like Teddy. <laughs> I wondered if you would comment on that. That's so funny that you already did. <laughs> All right, let's. Thank you, Catherine. That's a beautiful compliment. I appreciate that. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, get my tape on here. We'll peel our tape. We're going to use this really soft, beautiful, minty color. It's kind of a somewhere between a mint and a turquoise, isn't it? It's a beautiful color. And I'm going to pop this right on here. My cardstock is the same length as my card, so I have to be a little more careful than I sometimes am. And I still manage to have to trim it a lot of the time when I do that. <laughs> All right. Yep. I got a little white spot there. Two of them. One at the top and one at the bottom. But I'll fix it. Because you know I know how to do that. I just trim it off. All right. Let's get our extra... Adorable scoreable off of there. Gonna get my trimmer out here. I'm gonna make those little white, tiny white spots go away. And that's all I need to do to make them go away. You know, you got a good trimmer win. I'm gonna do the same thing to the top because I'm a little off there too. Just that little bit. And now it looks wonderful and professional. And only you, me, and 3,000 of our friends know I did it. Okay. You know what I didn't get was my image of my Robin out. Let's get that out of that stack. And let's see. We're going to our card. It's always a good idea to measure your card first. Is just ever so slightly under four. I'm going to start with four and three, or excuse me, three and three quarters on my first slice. And we'll check that for width. And that's good, but it's still a little narrow. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit more off, maybe another eighth off, just a tiny bit more. Let's see how that looks for width. Oh, much better. See there? Now I've got that pretty blue showing around the outside. Okay. 
Now these are the same size roughly. So I'm going to want to trim this down a little bit. It looks like in my sample I took the extra off the top. So I'm going to go to 8 inches in length initially. Now I did trim this down a little, so I might have to trim just a tad more off. I may have to straighten my bar a little bit on my trimmer. Getting one side, cutting just a little off from the other side. There we go. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, let's put that on there. <laughs> this is such an easy card. I'm almost embarrassed to say, yep, <laughs> cut two pieces, put them together. <laughs> Oops, that's the wrong packet. Let's see, where's my Brittany packet? It's here. There they are. <laughs> put it over with my... I get my little let it snow out here. This is so pretty. Isn't that just gorgeous on that rainbow mirror? It goes with our card so well, too. I'm going to use a plastic bag here. Put a little glue on it and make... Oh, wait! I don't even have to do that. Stop the presses! I found my new Vogue glue. I still need a back of... Oh, I have a paper towel. Paper towel. There we go. Ah. Too much stuff on my desk that I've hauled in from the garage. <laughs> there we go. Don't let Teddy chew that up, please. All right. Teddy's philosophy is if it hits the floor, it's his. <laughs> All right. Shake up my new bow glue pen. I missed this when I couldn't find it. You know where it was the other day when I couldn't find it on Thursday? It was sitting right here next to me, next to my paper cutter. <laughs> I just didn't see it when I looked. Okay, I'm going to dab this. Tap, 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 on the back. Tap, 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 tap. It was really funny on our way out here today, walking from the house to the shop. We passed the squirrel feeders, and that squirrel that I showed you in the in the picture in the newsletter, she was out there again. She started out. She started out eating, standing up, and before long, she was lounging again, just lounging with her feet straight out behind her this time. So cute. Oh my gosh, she's cute. <laughs> there we go. That's where we put the let it snow right at the top under the snowflakes. That looks great there. Let's put this topper down with some tape flag so we get it even on our page we'll stickle this up and we'll call the card number one done it is a struggle to start an online store betty goslow i completely get it it is way more involved than one would think it would be etsy makes it easy out there for those of you who want to sell your cards and things etsy makes it really easy but um, some sites, not so much. It can be a headache. Especially get about 10,000 products in it. <laughs> All right. I got it lined up where I want it. I'm kind of letting it tack where I have it at the top. Then I'm holding my card and pulling my tape legs out. And there we have a beautifully bordered card. It's all nice and even. We're going to get our stickles out here. I'm still using up those almost empty bottles. <laughs> I have two almost empty ones. And 
I want to put a little, just a little dot of stickles in the center of my snowflakes up here. Why not? Be pretty. I didn't do it on my sample card. I'm going to do it now. Why? Because I can. You can't have too much. So it would be hard to have too much glitter on these. Because they're beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to start glittering in my trees. Hi, Adeline. Welcome, friend. Now, with these bigger trees where you can really see the detail better, I like to kind of follow the branches a little bit. I think that looks pretty when you can kind of follow the branches a bit. That looks nice. Gorgeous. Oh, speaking of making things, and um, I was thinking about the number of explosion boxes that Betty has made that are just beautiful. Speaking of making explosion boxes, then uh, we have them back in stock again. We have been able to get another shipment of We Are Memory Keepers explosion box tools. They sell for just $16.99. Hi, Glenn. And we have them back in stock now. As you know, they tend to sell out quickly. So I did get a good size order of them this time. But you never know. So if you want one, you might want to get it pretty soon because they are an absolutely fabulous must-have tool, especially when you combine them with our, with some nice heavy paper like we have in some of our paper packs for you, and you combine them with our sentiments and greetings, they are really, really nice cards that are not all that difficult to make, although they look like they'd be difficult. But we won't tell. I won't tell they're not difficult if you won't. Okay. I'm just, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm just stickling over the snowy branches and the bigger branches. I'm just kind of following the lines. And I'll show you what it looks like. Now it will look even better dry. This is the first part I have done. Next, I'm going to do the big tree here. But look how beautiful that looks when you get the glitter glue on there. <laughs> I have to leave video and get an explosion box before Roberta gets them. <laughs> Well, it's good to see you jumping right into the the fray today here, Glenn. I'm glad to see it. Those explosion boxes are really cool. They really are. I bought, there's another um, We Are Memory Keepers explosion box tool, and I was confused why they had two of them. So I bought one to check out what it is. It's not nearly as cool as what we're doing. Um, it's one that um, you can put confetti and stuff in, and when you open it, it sprays out, which I think is actually has some potential. We might have to try that. But just in terms of versatility and what you'll use all the time, that $16.99 explosion box tool is a heck of a good deal. Okay, oh, 
Looks like I missed a couple places here. Get it up in the light where I can see it. You know, it's a great useful tool when we've sold them out not once but twice already and we still have demand for them. <laughs> All right, that is a gorgeous card right there. Number one is done. Any questions about number one before we move on? We looking good on that one? Ooh. My hands are sore. I've been lifting stuff out of boxes and pinch gripping, you know, large amounts of stuff. And my hands are sore from that. All right. Let's do this other one that we're doing with this cardstock before we leave this one. We're going to do that other Robin card. We, oops, that's not it. Here it is. Ah, yeah. This is the six by six. And we'll be taking the six by six starting will be flush with the side here and we'll be leaving these trees on this edge because we're going to use those when we do our center stepper card now this one we're going to cover our card directly with the card stock so let's get some tape on here uh that's a good question um did i put a snow a snowflake on it it uh it does have a snowflake in the let it snow it does not appear that i put a snowflake on there which i will be doing by the way because that's kind of my signature on these although we do have three snowflakes in the let it snow thank you for asking because i missed that and I can't be missing that. That's my signature this time. Okay. Let's cover this card. We'll peel our tape. <laughs> <laughs> all right now we're gonna line this up in the bottom and right hand corners hope i get it straight <laughs> there we go I'll flip this over. And cut around my card. I tell you, every little bit of this cardstock has to be used because it's just so beautiful. It's beautiful okay there's my <laughs> this is gorgeous just like that i just gotta say <laughs> thank you yes i do have wet stickles on the table and i do have to be careful i <laughs> danger wet stickles on the table <laughs> and that is always a good alert for me because i get cruising along and forget i've got wet glue That's true, I could do that. Rice is saying, why don't you put your wet stickles, your wet glue on your drying table? That would be a great idea. Now, this is still going to be really, really pretty, even though oh, it just kills me to cover up that forest, because that forest itself is beautiful. Beautiful! But I am going to do it, because 
this is too is beautiful. So I'm going to break my frame in three pieces like I so often do. I'm going to put some foam squares on the back here. I know I have two sheets of foam squares on the table. There we go. Put some foam squares on. I really have to do something about the creaky door. It sounds like a haunted house in here when people go in and out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Move them about six feet. That's about the right distance. <laughs> That'd be about the right distance for me too, Sharma. <laughs> yes, it would, my friend. <laughs> All right. So I have about, I think less than 20 boxes left to go through in the pod and everything will have been gone through and then um uh, scrap was supposed to be here to get the first load yesterday they didn't show up those codgers so i'm gonna have to call them again and remind them that there is a lot of product to move here, and they don't want to be fooling around about it. I think that our donation pile is probably, you won't believe this, guys, but I think it's pretty accurate. I'm going to say 160 to 200 boxes of stuff that I had in the garage and in the pod. Isn't that something? You might be wondering, how did you ever get that kind of an accumulation? And the answer to that is that I bought the remaining inventory of two different scrapbooking stores that went out of business in our area a few years ago. And I high graded it and pulled the most expensive items out. And then I had rolls and rolls and rolls of stickers and other things that were very labor intensive that I didn't do as much with. And I also bought the remaining inventory of a, an online retailer that went out of business and I bought their remaining inventory in each case when I bought that stuff, it was for pennies on the dollar. And I kind of high graded that and sold it off over time. But I never took time to actually go through and donate and, you know, pull out the things I wasn't going to use. Some of the stuff from the scrapbook stores and things just wasn't practical to try and mail, you know? So. <laughs> They're just getting such a treasure trove. You won't believe what a treasure trove they're getting at scrap. For example, I have 12 by 12 K and company albums. The beautiful ones, you know, the early K and company. I have boxes of them that were just too expensive to ship. If I was going to offer it at a discount, at least it was too expensive to ship. And so I'm donating them. <laughs> I gave a bunch of them to my sister's Head Start program. And cases and cases and cases of paper. In the early days of Simply Special, back when scrapbooking was truly a craze, we had, oh, good, Glenn. Good job. You got your explosion board. I'm so glad. 
uh, back in the early days, we used to sell paper by the sheet. And so we did that for four or five, maybe even six years, where the girls would pull the orders. And I had racks that looked like the racks that you see at Michael's and Joanne's lining the walls. And they would go through and they would pull all the orders from those paper racks. Oh, they were so happy with me when I stopped selling paper by the sheet because it was very expensive to ship, you know, um, or it, it was very expensive to sell because I had all that labor time. Um, so we, um, yeah. So I had boxes when we stopped selling the individual papers. Um, and I used to go down to hot off the press back in the day when Pauline would, Paulette, Paulette, president of hot off the press would have her warehouse sales. And I would go and buy 50 sheet packs of paper, which I got very reasonably. And so I had lots and lots and lots of bulk 12 by 12 paper here. And I... You know, when we stop selling it, okay, here's my Robin. I've taken my three piece frame. I've broken it in three pieces. I put the outside ring up on some foam squares. I glued the center ring flush and then the very center topper piece I put up on foam squares. Then I added foam squares just to one side of the merry little Christmas sticker and I let the other side rest on my on my frame and there we are that is our that's our next card we need to stickle it up um back to the story though um when we stopped selling that paper in bulk we packed it all up and I had cases and cases and cases of scrapbook paper, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper out there. And so scrap is getting just cases and cases and cases and cases of paper. You'll see some of the really cool stuff that we had once upon a time. I'm going to package some of the really neat stuff that you haven't seen in years. I'm going to package some of that up and make that available on a last chance sale. But um, just unbelievable stuff. You just won't even, you won't believe. The scrap's not going to believe what they're getting. I've done lots and lots of work with kids over the years, and yet I haven't done anything since too much since I left the art literacy program. And that's been a lot of years ago now, but I had tons of kids craft stuff. Um, I used to, one of the things I would do when I was the art literacy coordinator is we had an art day and we'd run the whole school through a series of activity tables outside. And so I had tons of pipe cleaners and pom-poms and art foam and felt and drawing tablets and pencil sets and uh, just tons and tons of stuff that I accumulated over the years and set back for my art literacy program. <laughs> and um, so there's a lot of that in there. Oh my gosh, there's just so much stuff you wouldn't even believe it. Lots of really neat organizers and things that are just too big to ship. If we weren't in the midst of this COVID, I would sell them through my crafty friends group. But I don't really want to have to store all this stuff again. And a lot of it's too big to ship. So it's going to scrap. 
Now, when I say scrap, that doesn't mean that we're getting there. We're throwing it away. It means that it's going to that teacher support group. Can you guys, can you guys see what's happening here in the corner, upper corner of your screen? Look who's come to visit. He says, oh, mama, stop talking and love the dog. Stop talking and love the dog. There he is. Can you put your head down and say, hi, everybody? <laughs> He's up here pawing at me. Mom, <laughs> don't you know I want to be loved? So, yeah. <laughs> so, so many. <laughs> so many boxes of stuff. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> When they delivered our pod, this is a true story. When they delivered our pod to us, they, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those podzillas work, but it's kind of fascinating. They have this crane type thing that is actually on wheels and it attaches to the side of the truck. And then when they get here, they raise it up and it goes over the top of the pod and hooks on with hooks and then they pick the pod up and move it and they can move it around on the wheels our pod was so heavy with all that paper in it it flattened the wheels of podzilla <laughs> he said what have you got in there i've never seen it do that <laughs> i've never seen the wheels go flat before what in the world have you got in this thing <laughs> Good thing they had double wheels because one wheel actually came right off the rim. It flattened it so bad. <laughs> Teddy and Stickles don't mix real well. That is true. That is true. We'll have to get Teddy a PB Nana here in a little bit because I love it when he comes to visit of his own volition. A lot of times he hides from me when I try and pick him up to show him in class, but... <laughs> he just got his hair cut last night so he's a dapper looking young man today he was getting pretty scruffy and it was still hot here so he was getting really miserable so we finally got him in and got his hair cut time to get my other near empty bottle out here off. <laughs> you can get so much out of these bottles when you think they're already empty just by turning them upside down and leaving them for a while It's going to be really nice not to have that rental on that pod. I'll tell you that. It was ridiculous for me to pay the amount of rent I did for stuff that I'm largely donating now. But, you know, sometimes there just aren't enough hours in the day to do everything you want to do. And you have to kind of choose. And I chose to work on other things. But this summer, when I got the notice that they were raising my rent on the pod again, I thought, I can't just justify leaving that sitting there. I've got to deal with this now. So today, or last night, Brittany and I made a final sweep through the stuff we had set aside for our teacher that's doing a scrapbooking class with her high school students. Actually, I don't know if she's a teacher or if she's a par um, parent or grandparent doing the class, but um, she had contacted me to say, do you ever have any donation material available? And I told her about my upcoming project and told her I would set her aside a box of things suitable to high school students. And so Brittany and I went through the stuff that I just kept setting things aside and I had a whole pallet of boxes set aside with potential 
material. Well, obviously, I'm not going to ship that across the country. So we went through and sorted that down and got that to a couple of large flat rate boxes we'll be mailing off to her. Hey, Thelma. Good to see you. Hi, Kathy, girly girl. All right. We have stickles. We have one final touch, and that's to put its snowflake in the corner. How beautiful is that? Okay, let's see. Um, my packet. Here's my packet of snowflakes from Brittany. I'll use those first. I don't know, Mary R., but you know what? I will check it out as soon as I get off the air. We'll find out if it went through. And if it didn't, I will let you know. I'm sure I'll still be able to see it, even if you didn't sign in with your name. I'm sure I'll still be able to see it. So we'll check it out. We'll check it out. So... We'll definitely check it out. If you weren't here earlier when I was talking about my new Etsy store, I just want to repeat my offer. That is that in our Etsy store, I need to develop some sales and some reviews out there for our products. I'm not ask, I'm not bribing anybody to give an excellent review on anything. I mean, I think you have to evaluate us fairly for both the service that you get and the I don't know what kinds of questions they ask about the product itself but what I would like is to be able to build a little bit of track history with um, some order history because even though we originally signed up for our Etsy account in 2018, it didn't do anything with it. So now it's showing as a 2021 store with no sales. <laughs> That's not good. So I would like to have some sales and some reviews in Etsy. And if you will make a, a purchase in Etsy and leave a review over the next two weeks, it's only a $35 minimum for free shipping in Etsy. If you'll make a purchase and leave a review, I'm going to drop all the names of people who did that into a hat and make a, a drawing for some kind of a special prize. And I have some really, really neat special prizes available, I'll tell you, since I have been cleaning house. <laughs> I've got some amazing things. So... Um, I would love it if you guys could go out and do a little bit of shopping in Etsy and some, a few of our things like our, um, three piece decoupage toppers are actually less expensive. This is the Nouveau large glue pen that I'm using to tap on the back and, um, apply my snowflakes. But I will, um, I will throw all your names in a hat, everybody who participates in that, and somebody will get a special prize. And I'll tell you who won and what they got in our class two weeks from now. Or maybe at the party. Well, let's see, when's the party? Is that two weeks from now? Yeah, that's three weeks. I'll tell you before that who won. Okay, now this time I want to take my image from right. Well, let me show you with the actual card. I want to take this image from right here. So I'm going to come in about an inch from the side, a little more than an inch from the side of my cardstock. And We will. I did. Yes. All right. So I'm going to cover this card with my DL 
four by eight uh rainbow mary i did say hi to thelma how's your grandson doing thelma Are you feeling stronger, Roberta? Are you feeling better? Okay, so let's get this up here. And we're going to put our rainbow Mary on our four by eight DL card. It's only a little bit of trim on this because that's made really close to the size of a of a DL card. So that's looking great. Okay. All right. So I think let's see. You might want to look at my other cards I'm using here again. Yes. Okay. I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't mess myself up if I cut that off. And I would have. So I'm glad I looked. See here? I don't want to cut. Hi, Catherine. Oh, good night. See you next time. Okay. Because I need the green part up here, don't cut this side off yet. We're going to trim it this way instead, okay? Because we need to retain that green strip for our other card. I was thinking maybe we did, and I'm glad I checked it before I went cutting up my cardstock. So the best way to proceed from here will be to take my strip for my card lengthwise off of my card, my cardstock. So that's what I'm going to do next. My card is four inches wide. I'm going to start with three and three quarters. And I'm cutting it lengthwise. Now I can trim it down to where I want it and not worry about getting into the part that I need for my other two cards. All right, so I want to trim this down to where I have probably the, the best way to describe this might be to say I want about a quarter of an inch of the green, maybe a yeah, about a quarter of an inch from the snowflake that's the furthest to the right. So I want it to look about like that. See, I've got this one snowflake kind of hanging out here a little further. And it's a quarter of an inch out from that snowflake. And then I have lots of room on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this to eight inches. And we'll check our width. I need to take a little bit more off my top and bottom. You can see I've got great side margins. But I need to take a little bit more off my top and uh, my height measurement. So I'm going to take a little more of that off. And that is going to be, oops, get my, pay attention where your fold is, Deborah. <laughs> this is going to be great. See there? That looks nice. Okay. So. I've cut my card to four, or three and three quarters, maybe three and five eighths by eight inches, and it's a perfect fit. Let's go ahead and put this down to our card. This time, I, in making these cards, guys, there's nothing at all complicated about our techniques for building the cards, but our layout is a little dicey so you have to kind of pay attention to how you're laying these out so i'm glad we started with that this time
Okay. So let's get these beautiful swans on this beautiful paper. Lay that out. Get a nice border all the way around it. I was talking with Jordan yesterday. They didn't get any damage to speak of from Hurricane Ida where she lives, but she said they did have the most ferocious storm she's seen since she's been back east. She said the thunder and lightning, the thunder was shaking the house and the lightning was immediately right behind the thunder. And her, <coughs> her uh, what's her dog called? Uh, Calahula spotted leopard dog, her 65 pound baby, crawled up between her and Jake to sleep. She said there was no way that dog was going in her kennel. <laughs> She wanted to be loved <laughs> right now, Mom. <laughs> and Jordan said it was a pretty ferocious storm, but they didn't have any damage where they are. My heart goes out to all the people in New York and Louisiana and other places who just, excuse me, New Jersey, yeah, who suffered such great losses. Terrible. I'll get your message through Etsy as soon as we get off the air, Mary, and I'll check and make sure I have your order and things. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. Now, New York got some serious flooding, didn't they? Oh, that was something. See those torrents of water running down the streets? The pictures from the subway, terrifying. Okay. Let's get some stickles all the time. We're looking at that and thinking, we don't want that much rain, but we would like to have a little of that rain out here, please. Just a little. So what I'm going to do with the swans is I'm going to come back and forth a little bit on some of these, some of these lines. Let's pick up some of that reflection. And then I did outline my swans, as I so often do. And I actually outlined the water a little bit under them. Can you see that? So let's get some, we'll put some lines out here to kind of pick up some of that reflection in the water. Just don't press hard on your, on your tube. Just go back and forth really lightly really lightly and kind of pick up some of that reflection in the water. That looks so pretty when you do it that way. Just really lightly. I'll go between my swans just a little bit. I'm going to come in underneath here, hit some of those lines a little bit behind them. I may even come up. I didn't do it last time, but I may even come up and just do some very light lines up here at the top where they have those little lines. Just very, very lightly, just enough to get just a little glittery look up there. Now I'm going to outline my swans. Once again, lightly, lightly. We don't want it to look gobby around our birds. Just very light. But then they kind of look mystical if you outline them. And that's fun. And you can see where his one feather is here. I'm going to cut or his first wing. I'm coming back in his wing and outlining his wing a little bit. Because that looks pretty. So it'll look even prettier when it's dry. But here's what I've done. Okay. All right. We'll set that one to dry. Close to six feet as I can reach. 
All right. All right. Now let's do these two cards off the top of this card stock. Look at that beautiful scene that's left. We cut those gorgeous birds off and we still have this. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I wish you could send me some of that rain, Roberta. Boy, it worries me. It's so dry out here. It actually really, really worries me. I look out at my huge trees in my backyard. We have, how tall do you think those are, honey? 60, 70 feet or taller, maybe. Trees in our backyard. And the tips of all the branches are turning out. See, my hands are sore, guys. <laughs> Ow. Uh, the tips of all the branches are turning brown where all the new growth was. It's just burned from the sun. Sunburn. I've never seen that in all my life. Okay. You got a half a sheet of adorable scorable here. We're going to cover our card. Make sure when you cover your card, you're going this way. Okay because we need this other piece for our center step card. So make sure you cut it this way. Don't go the other way. Okay. <laughs> I think we can all use some detoxing for our mind by crafting. I hear you. That's, that's the best way to do it right there. Sometimes when I, my mind gets all in a muddle and I get all wrapped up in myself, I tend to be a little bit of a worrier. I don't know if you guys picked that up, but I am. I'm a little bit of a worrier. I, I try not to be because I like to think I'm a person of faith, but I also just pray about things and I tend to pick them up and carry them around with me because <laughs> I'm ridiculous that way. And so I tend to be a bit of a worrier and when I get all wrapped up in myself, sometimes I have to come out here and just craft away because you can't stay in that zone and be creative. It doesn't work. You have to, you have to get out of that mindset to be creative. And that's a blessing to be able to do that, isn't it? Is that true, Roberta? Are you, are you giving me a hard time? Good night, Diane. Thanks for coming in and hanging out with us for a few minutes. <laughs> okay, I trimmed that off just a little bit because my adorable scoreable is ever so slightly narrower than my card was, so I fixed that. Now, this one, look how pretty this is. See that blue stripe on there? Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the way that goes with the adorable scoreable pack. Isn't that beautiful? So we're gonna use that. I'm going to trim this down. I'm gonna cut this to four and five eighths inches wide. No, I'm not. I'm going to trim it to five and five eighths inches wide. Five and five eighths, not four and five eighths. Five and five eighths inches wide. And now I'm going to take the extra that I need to take off. I'm going to take that off the top so I have the most I can see of my mountain here. So I'll take the extra off the top. My card is four and an eighth, but I'm finding that I need to come to about three and three quarters. So I'm going to come clear to three and three quarters. And I need to take just a tad more 
just a tiny bit off the edge to get a nice even border around. I'd love to give you guys exact measurements, but the truth is, depending on how you cut it and things, you just have to just have to kind of trim a little bit more here and there to get exactly what you want. We're going to put this down onto our beautiful deep steel blue adorable scoreable with some tape flags. Okay. All right. So I'm going to find the place that it's the best balance. Tap it in place. It's not quite even on this end, so I'm going to pop up that tiny bit of adhesive that we let stick at the top, and I'm going to try that just a little bit more. Okay, so I've got that beautiful blue border all the way around my card. I love the way that looks. All right. Okay, now... We're going to get our toppers for this off our topper sheet. We need this pretty little robin, which we're going to put up in the tree. And we need this season's greetings, which we're going to put kind of towards the bottom over here. Now, this is a good place if you have a snowflake die to get that out and cut yourself a few extras because what i like to do is put a few snowflakes on this card so i'm gonna put that one there i'm gonna put this one kind of down here it'd be nice if i had another one which i do because i have my little cheat bag here so i'm gonna get another one out of my cheat bag and assume that everybody probably has a few of these little snowflake dies here and there. Make yourself a few little extra snowflakes out of some Rainbow Mary. Let's start by getting our bird up in the tree. So we'll pop this in. I'm putting a two foam squares right over the top of where the little hole is in the tag because I'm using this as a topper rather than a tag and I don't want that little piece to pop out because that might look funny. I want it to stay there. So I'm putting foam squares behind it to attach to it and just hang on. Okay, so I'm going to put my robin right up in the tree. I kind of want to make it look like the branches sort of line up. <laughs> and I'm going to glue some snowflakes on that side, just two of my little ones. This one has a few pop-outs in it I didn't take out yet. So let's pop those out. How are we doing for time, honey? We're at 324, so we've been at it for one hour and 24 minutes. We started a little late because I was doing my discussion of Etsy and showing the last cards and kind of waiting for latecomers to come in today. So I think we're doing okay when the pigs fly more bad trouble. <laughs> Oh dear, Roberta. <laughs> I guess you gotta maintain a sense of humor about it. 
Oh, oh, oh. My gosh. How do you get a cow out of a tree? There's a question. Somebody's crying in. But after a big storm, would you have a crane available? Maybe not. Fire department might be able to hook something up to help rescue it. Hard to say. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Okay. I'm going to put one of my snowflakes kind of off to the side. I'm going to put my season's greetings in the center here on some foam squares. They used a crane, okay. Well, so the firefighters did help the tr the cow. Good. Thank you. Very carefully, Sharma said. <laughs> Oh, Charma, you're a kick. <laughs> uh -oh. Let's get some stickles on this card. I'm going to put some on these branches behind my topper. I'm just outlining quickly and gently. A few on the branches. A little snowy area right there where we have a little bit more snow build up on the branches. It's a great place for some stickles. I'm going to put a little bit on the trunk of my tree just on one side, maybe on the top of my branch. And then I'm going to put my little horizon line here with some stickles. And I didn't do much with the background trees because they're very, very subtle in this one, but just a little bit of added stickles just for fun and interest. There we go. We are now at four cards finished, two to go. This last one will go together pretty quickly because we already have our cardstock. Look at this. This is leftovers. Can you believe it? That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get that European A6 card out. We're going to put some tape directly on the card. Well, I do love stickles. I really, truly do. I also love my quickie glue pen and our ultra fine, extra high quality glitter. I love that too. So if they didn't have stickles, I'd use that. But stickles is quick and easy in class. And I do really appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to match the bottom of my cardstock. The bottom's what I want to match, and I'll cut off any extra sky. Because I don't want to lose any of that beautiful landscaping. And I have a little trim off here. You guys, once again, are not going to believe how little throwaway we have from this kit. <laughs> You're not going to believe it, guys. That's amazing. Okay. On this one, we're using Let It No, we're not. We're using With Love This Christmas and Always. We're using our round swan topper, our smaller one. And we're using 
a piece of our border. We're going to be really stingy with our border because we want to do two cards with it. I want my border on this card too. So I'm going to cut this piece of border so that I barely cover my card. Let me tell you how long this is. I think I got it just right. When I, when I was holding that up, my goal was to cut this border so that I will have enough to clip it and put my border on both sides of my oval topper. So I cut this border piece to about four and three eighths. Now I'm going to trim a small piece. I'm going to say about three quarter inch piece. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this border here and I'm going to put this little piece here. And then I'll put my foam square or my um, topper up on some foam squares and put it right in the middle between the two. And nobody will ever know there's not border under there. Because if it doesn't show, it doesn't have to be there. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy girl. <laughs> oh, wow. Nature is an amazing thing. You know, we had some remarkable things out here after Mount St. Helens blew in 1980. We had some just remarkable things that happened. It was a lumber camp up near the mountain. And that lumber camp had a big metal building. Well, when Spirit Lake with the lake that was below Mount St. Helens, when all the debris hit Spirit Lake, Spirit Lake cut loose and flooded the valley. And it came down in a big flash flood. Well, during that flash flood, the water picked up a forklift and shoved it through the side of a metal building and it was hanging right below the roof line of that metal building. <laughs> amazing, amazing power, amazing power. There were also railroad tracks up there because they used trains to, you know, remove the logs in those logging camps. There were railroad tracks up there that when the water came through, it caught the end of the tracks and rolled the tracks like a coil. <laughs> Now that was amazing. Okay, I got my borders maybe just a tad high here. I don't know if it's going to let me lift them or not. Might not, might. I think it's going to let me lift them. I don't recommend what I just did, by the way. I think I'd like it just a little bit lower, though. little lower than I placed it before. So that looks better down just a little bit. But now I've got it on straight. <laughs> this is why we don't move them once we lay them down, guys, because it just becomes a mess. <laughs> wow, a drinking straw stuck in a telephone pole. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you hear that, honey? The wind was so hard a drinking straw was stuck in a telephone pole. 
<laughs> wow, sir. You don't have to wonder if that could kill you. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're going to put some foam squares on this banner. Oh, wow, that's amazing, Annette. Incredible power of nature. Sometimes we like to think we're in charge here, and every once in a while Mother Nature says, now nah, let me just show you who's in charge. <laughs> it ain't you. <laughs> Okay, here's our border across the top. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now we're going to put this swan into the lake down here. We're going to go fairly low to the bottom and kind of... We have a bird that's in flight just above our topper here. Ugh. I don't know how you live in Tornado Alley, Betty. That would be terrifying. But I guess it's like anything else. You'd probably be terrified to live under a volcano, too. And our earthquakes. But it, we don't get an awful lot of earthquakes like Canada or like California does. But we're on a significant earthquake fault here. So I say the big one's coming one of these days. People in other parts of the country have a lot of flood insurance. Out here, we have earthquake insurance. Okay, let's put some stickles on it and card number five will be done. I'm going to start by putting in my mountain line behind here because that's beautiful. I think I'll put a little extra on the mountains there because why not? And I'm just going to follow my horizon line down and around. And I'm going to put some stickles on these little trees back here because they're snowy and beautiful. So they should have some stickles. Didn't get much there. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, we'll get those little trees done now. And let's do these little trees right in behind our topper. And they're kind of indistinct, so I'm just going to kind of squiggle a little bit in those. Kind of. And then we have these nice ones in the front that are fairly distinct. And let's put a little on those. Kind of go side to side until I see some distinct branches. Then I kind of follow the branches out. And the same, the little ones just kind of side to side on the little tiny ones. Another good size one here. I'll go side to side until I see the branches and I'll kind of follow my branches a little bit. We've got a water line here in the front. Be nice to put a little around the edge of the water and maybe a little on the water right under our swan. And then I think we're done. Let's see how this looks.
you there. That's awfully pretty. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, that's number five. Now we got number six to do. And we will be finished with this. We'll look at what our scraps are. You won't even believe how few scraps we have. We have so few. <laughs> All right. On this one, we have our round topper. We're going to build that up on some cardstock. We've got our let it snow. We've got our pretty border piece. We've got our adorable scorable piece. We're going to do a little paper piecing here, guys. I'll warn you. We're going to do a little bit of paper piecing here to make this work, but we can do it. Out of what we have. Okay. <laughs> I want to be in that card too. Me too. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this one strangely because we do not have a lot of cardstock to work with. We have a half a sheet of cardstock and we want to cover what we've got of this card. So what I'm going to have you do to begin with is different than what we usually do. I'm going to measure here to here, and I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock to fit that space. Okay, so let's start here. I want to measure this side to side, get a good accurate measure on this. It's important. And it is four and five eighths wide. So I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock to four and five eighths. It's actually four and like just a hair. Let me measure that again. Four and five eighths. It's actually four and nine sixteenths. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to get this just as accurate as I possibly can. And I got a good fit. I got a perfect fit. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this down to my card right now. <laughs> you guys might think this is easier than what we usually do. It probably is in some ways. <laughs> I don't usually have you paper piece that, but. All right. So I'm going to put this, I'm just rechecking which direction it glues to that is not coming out. Let's try a different glue bottle. I want to be able to, well, for heaven's sakes, I haven't used my glue bottles that much. They're all needing a pen in them. Okay. Recheck it again. <laughs> all right. Come on. Let's get some glue action here. I'm probably not pressing very hard because my hands are really sore. This glue bottle is just not being cooperative at all. I'm going to have to clean that one thoroughly. Let's get a different one. I know I have good glue bottles here. It's just been so darn hot in this shop that everything is needing to be thoroughly cleaned. Not a good advertisement for my glue bottles when everything is there we go I finally got one working good all right I'm gonna smooth that glue down just a bit 
I don't like to have rough edges. And I'm going to put this card right on top. Okay, so this is where we are so far. After all of my shenanigans trying to get glue out of the bottle. Okay, next, I'm going to take this piece of cardstock that I have left. <laughs> It is one and a quarter inches wide. I am going to cut that roughly in half. I now have two pieces. Told you we're going to do some paper piecing here, people. <laughs> I'm going to put this right here at the bottom. Okay. I did not take the time. Yes, this is a stepper card. And I'm doing it differently this time because we have very, very limited supplies left. I do see that I got it a little uneven on the top. Try it, straighten that up a little bit, but I'm gonna probably have to just live with it. Okay, I'm gonna put some glue Really, I am. Forget the glue bottles. They're annoying me. I'm going to do it with tape. Okay, well, that'll work, Betty. That'll work. Okay. I'm going to put a piece of tape down here. Gatefold will be pretty on this, actually. And I'm going to get myself a nice straight line at the top. I can trim the extra off the bottom, but I want a nice straight line on the top of my cardstock. So. That looks good. I'm going to match the other. I'll know that I have it right when I when this border piece will fit over the top and it does. Okay, now I'm going to put my other piece on and I'm just going to make it match up to that one. And now I have the bottom of my card covered with those scraps. <laughs> I'm going to Trim away the extra. You said you guys might think this ends up being easier than what I usually have you do. Okay, so here we are. Now we're going to take this piece we had we're going to cut it in half because you see we have just a little too little see the ends there we have a little too little to cover the whole thing but if you can't see it it doesn't have to be there this piece i have left is six and a quarter so i'm going to cut this at three and an eighth I'm going to hook it on over here and over here, leaving a little gap in the middle. Okay. <laughs> Paper piecing. Yeah, our prettiest, perhaps our prettiest card is being made out of all the leftovers. <laughs> okay, I put a little piece of tape there. Now I'm going to 
put this border right to the top of my face. Oops, got it on straight again. What is my problem with getting so straight today? There we go. Right across there. And right across here. I have a little gap in the middle. I don't care. I don't care that there's a gap in the middle for two reasons. My round topper's coming down over that, and my let it snow's coming up from the bottom, so it won't matter at all. Let's put our let it snow on there, and you can see that it is great already. Now, I actually am going to wait to put it on because I want to balance that with this. Okay, let's do our build up. You know me. I could just glue this whole thing down to my card and call it good, but I like supporting it if it's hanging over the edge at all. Now, I do need to tell you if you are. Um, Hanging over the edge, you might have to use a slightly larger envelope. We probably all have those. If you don't have them, I have plenty for you. <laughs> I know where you can get some. So you are covered. My glue bottles are just being a pain today. I don't know why, other than it's just been hot. And I haven't used them as much since I've been out in the shop. So that's probably, huh? I abuse them. I leave the caps off. That's true. Okay. All right. Here we go. At least got glue coming out of it now. And I don't want to press very hard because my thumbs hurt. <laughs> I might have to, or at least really clean my caps out good. You can take, go in from the other way, open it. Oops, well, that's clever of me. Let's glue the pen right into it. You can go in the other way from the inside and kind of scoop out the goopy glue too. I can't believe it's been 20 years since 9-11. It seems in so many ways like yesterday. I was saying that to Bryce. I asked him, can you believe it's been 20 years? He said, yes, I can. I can't. I still remember the morning so clearly. Okay, I got that on there. Now, when I'm cutting out around these, I usually prefer to glue down the first layer, the outside layer, as opposed to putting it up on foam squares, which I usually like to do. Yeah, I think my glue bottles have been cursed, too. I mean, I usually love these things, but they're just not behaving nicely today. They rode around in a hot car. They've been left open repeatedly. It's been hot in the shop. I haven't been used as much as normal. And I think they're just being contrary to let me know all those things are not okay. I have four glue bottles going here, though, and all of them are being naughty to me. I 
have to look and see if I have that Wild West stamp. I have a lot of stamping up that we just my personal supplies that just pulled, got pulled out of the pod. A lot of them have never even been put on the blocks. Are you going down both rings? Yes, I'm going down the next ring too. The inside ring. Attempting to avoid getting glue everywhere. Funny, since I can't get any glue to come out of the bottle, so I still managed to get it all over me, but I did. <laughs> okay. Wow, my fingers hurt. <laughs> Okay, I'll be glad to be done with this pod project. This nonsense of picking up all these stacks of papers and things has got to stop. It's causing pain. It has to stop. Okay. Okay. Let's get some foam squares. Going to put the centerpiece up on some foam squares, create a little added dimension with that. Then I'm going to cut around my circle. I just enjoy the added stability. Ooh. Don't you guys love this set? Did everybody get yours now? Has, have most of you received your orders with your season, or sparkling season? I know Betty received hers by Thursday. Have any of the rest of you gotten yours? What's your reaction if you have? Are they as pretty as I said they are? Uh, I'm pretty in person. You can see on camera they're pretty, but... Are they as pretty in person? Because believe it or not, they're even more pretty in person. Remember when you're cutting, hold your scissors in one place and move your paper. That will give you much greater control. go it's beautiful got our beautiful topper we're ready to put that down onto our card we're ready to put our let it snow on our card i want my topper to come down i'm actually probably going to cover most of my gap at the bottom with my circle and then i'll put my seasons let it snow even up over that so let's get some foam squares on here. Just make sure that your foam squares are in far enough to catch the cardstock and not be sticking where you don't want them. Because our cardstock's narrow this time, remember? So I'm keeping my foam squares towards the middle more than I usually do. <laughs> Even this hurts. <laughs> That's feeling these little squares off. I do love these cards, so I love making these cards too. They just make me happy. Okay, if I wanted to use my envelope that comes with this, I can easily bring that clear down. See there? I can easily bring that down. Or, as I did in this one, 
I can raise it up just a little bit, which I also think looks really, really pretty. Let me raise mine up just a little bit. I wanted to show you I could do it, but I'm going to raise mine up a little bit. I don't mind using a little larger envelope. I have plenty of six by sixes that I can put this in if I need to. I'm going to put some foam squares under my Let It Snow. Then we're going to add our trees on the side stickle and card number six will be done. <laughs> yes, that is true, Betty Gossel. Especially this last couple of weeks because of the bending and moving and lifting and the pinch gripping all that paper, you know, paper and stacks of stuff. And, you know, I don't use common sense and and moderate how much I pick up at a time. And that's my own fault that my hands get sore from that. Oh, <laughs> my swans are swimming uphill. I think I need to resolve that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, here's where we are. All right. Okay, and now we have somewhere here our leftover piece of trees. There it is. We have this beautiful leftover piece of trees. See that? That's what we are going to use to do our side pieces. I actually think, in honesty, if I was going to be really fair and square about this, I'm not sure that I didn't take these trees off a different sheet. I might have. But we're going to use this one that we have left over within this kit because I think it makes sense to do that. Now... I'm going to cut this off. I know it only has to be four inches tall to fit this channel because I've done a million of these over time. And I'm going to use the upper part of the trees because you can't tell where the bottom is, but it's going to look kind of funny if I chop the tops off the trees, right? So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to cut myself First, I'm going to make sure, yeah, it's two inches, just a little over two inches wide, which is perfect. I'm going to cut this just a tiny bit over four inches long. Now I'm going to cut it at one inch in two one inch strips. And these are going to become my insets for the sides. And that's going to be beautiful. <laughs> Wait till you guys see what we have left over from this kit. You won't believe it. <laughs> okay, so I have this nice pretty trees. And sometimes I think it's almost easier to lay these out with the card flat to get these where you want them to go. I'm going to use a piece of tape since my glue bottles are being so very contrary today and I have to just stop what I'm doing and clean them, which has not been in my schedule. Okay, I'm going to put this one right here i'm starting it at the channel i should really truly if i was doing it right i should have started it at the top and worked down but i did cut them a little extra long so i knew i'd be okay and this way i can just clip the tops off of them but now i'm going to put the other one in the other side what do you guys think is it almost easier to do the um the center step card this way, piecing it in instead of doing all the fine cutting around it. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Mary, we are going to have some personal stamp exchange um, stickers, some beautiful vintage Christmas stickers in our last chance sale next week. Can you believe it? I found a bunch of the personal stamp exchange stickers in the pod. They're beautiful ones. Okay. Now I'm going to clip my extra off the top. Then we need a little stickles. And we will be finished. How are we doing for time? 406. Two hours, six cards, including a paper pieced card. Without doing the stickles yet, you guys kind of know what we're doing with the stickles. So I don't know if you want me to do this here or if you want to call it good because you've watched me do the stickles over and over again. I want to show you what's left out of our entire kit. Okay, let me throw our trimmed off paper away. Our, just our paper strips mostly from our, from our tape. I want to show you what's left out of our entire kit, guys. You have this. You have this. This is empty. This is the only other piece of cardstock of any size at all. These are my trimmos. I don't even have enough for a book. Oh, I could make a bookmark out of that, I suppose. I could. That'd be pretty. <laughs> Oh, do. Yeah, send a picture. Look what we have left. I'd say we did a heck of a job of using up our kit, if that's the biggest pieces we have left. Make a tag. Yeah, tag would be pretty. Can you believe it? I do have a couple here that require snowflakes because they don't have my signature on them yet. I think I'm out of snowflakes in my Britney bag. But I can't complain because I wasn't supposed to get any. <laughs> and she gave them to me. So there we go. I'm going to put this up here on the top because that will look pretty. It needs some stickles yet, but there we go. Is that just like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Wowzer. Here's our original with the stickles on it. Aren't they beautiful, guys? Yowzer. Yeah, we'll make a tag. I will. I'll make a tag or a bookmark out of this one. This one is that really pretty color. I don't know if I'll find anything to you kind of sentiment for. It'd be great for some more snowflakes, maybe for some of the other cards. But that's what we have left. That. <laughs> Out of all that paper. So I'd say we did a pretty good job here today, guys. Six cards. Two and maybe a half hours. Beautifully done. Um, do you know which one's which coming up? Brittany's on her schedule. We have, I think, I don't know which one. I don't know which one's Thursday and which one's Saturday. Polar Bear Saturday? Okay. Okay, Family Fun. The Penguin Set. Coming up on Thursday. We'll do six cards out of the penguin set. Six absolutely stunning cards out of the penguin set. And next Saturday, we're doing polar bears with our beautiful polar bear easel card. I love this one. Gorgeous. That's it. Wowzer. Do you guys have any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom? 
Anybody? Yes, thank you, Betty Gosnell. Smash that thumbs up button if you didn't do so yet, guys. Make sure when you hover over it, it says, I liked. Um, I, and if you hover over it, we'll say unlike. And you don't want to do that. Wow, that was fun. That was great fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. We are going to have some fun, fun things in What's New Wednesday. Brittany listed a lot of new things. And I'm going to list some of our last chance bargains before Wednesday. And yes, thank you, Alice. Please don't forget to take a look on Etsy. I would love it if you guys would place some small orders on Etsy at that 35 threshold, if you can, so you get free shipping. I don't want to doing me a favor, cost you money. But I love the idea that um, we can get some, you know, a little bit of business going there. Oh, <laughs> get a little bit of business going there so that we can, um, you know, build our ratings up and people know that we, they can trust us, which I believe you guys know now you can trust us to do what we say we're going to do. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. And I look forward to seeing your car. Oh, Etsy. You didn't hear about that, Karen. We opened a new Etsy store. I'm shifting some of our business from when uh, there's a link above Thelma, but Bryce will link it again for you. I think he probably still has the link saved. Um, we opened an Etsy store. We're shifting a lot of our business away from Amazon because the fees are just becoming outrageous and the policies at Amazon are just, just crazy. They're just crazy. Their refund policies and stuff are just killing us. So we'll still have a small presence on Amazon because I find a lot of fun customers at Amazon, but we're, we opened an Etsy store. Our, the name of our store, thank you, Mary, is right now, hopefully by next week, it'll be changed and I'll let you know that. But the name of our store right now is Simply Special Craft without the S. Um, our policies on Amazon, on, on Etsy, some of our items just to attract attention to them are actually less than our store items. The one that you'll find that's like that is our deco large topper sets. The individual topper sets like Christmas, the joy of Christmas is even out there and they're marked uh, below $4. The um, regular topper sets are marked at our store prices. The three piece topper sets are marked at our store prices. Uh, most other items are, are priced $1 higher than our regular store, but the free shipping threshold drops to um, $35 on Etsy. So you kind of make it up there. Um, and I was saying that, Karen, that um, if you guys will go out and place an Etsy order and leave me some feedback, everybody who places an Etsy order within the next two weeks is going and leaves feedback is going to be put into a drawing. Oh, of course, Karen. Of course you can still order on the regular site. It's not going anywhere. I'm just kind of trying to replace Amazon business a little bit because our Amazon business has really dropped off since I took all of my lower price items off Amazon. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but all a customer has to do if an item is priced at less than $10 is say, ah, it, I don't like it as much as I thought I would and Amazon will refund it automatically. So the seller is out the item, they're out the outbound postage and Amazon refunds the purchase price. <laughs> so absolutely, you can order on a regular site. And most of the time, you'll be better off doing that. But right now, during this, um, this early stage, I actually have a few things marked down below our regular. And the $35 for free shipping is just a nice, is just a nice threshold for you. Um, I put stickers and stuff out there. So there's times when you may not want to place an order more than $69, but you need some peel stickers or something. 
they're a dollar more than they are in our store. But again, you will only have a $35 minimum purchase um, requirement for free shipping. So it all works out in the wash. And um, yeah, so you guys bring your boxing gloves. So, um, yeah, so I've just moved a lot of my business off Amazon and I needed a channel to kind of replace that. We decided to do Etsy and because I started to do Etsy clear back in 2018 and never really did anything with my store, it says I, I opened my store in 2018 and I have no sales. So I think people are a little afraid of me right now and that's where you guys can help me. And the party. Yes, Mary R., you are so good at reminders, my friend. Thank you for that. I love that about you. Our party is set for September 26th. Put it on your calendars, guys. It's our party. It's another online party. We're going to have a blast. If you didn't go to the last one, check out the video. It's fun and it's funny. And we are going to have a, just a wonderful time celebrating together. So. That's what I got for you. If there are no other questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom today, we will sign off so I can get some work done for you for Wednesday. Is there anything anybody else has? Yes, we will be here on YouTube. Yes, we will. On September 26th, it's party time. I'm still afraid of me, Debbie. You're afraid of me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, because I tempt you? Oh, you're tempt you're afraid to see what I come up with for Wednesday. There's gonna be some fun stuff. <laughs> There's gonna be some fun stuff in our last chance sales. If some of it's really rare, some of it you've seen before, some of it you haven't seen before. I'm also going to bring some old favorites back to the store. You are going to have a blast coming up. <laughs> All righty. I will see you later. And uh, for now, I'm going to say good night, Gracie. We'll see you Wednesday. Stay safe, friends.